Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy and humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. 
Remember us, O Lord, as you favour your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favour your people. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true, but there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's, the works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do you think that I will accuse you before the Father? The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. This beautiful Gospel, Jesus speaking here to the Jews, trying to draw them in more deeply to belief in who he is. It's very beautiful to see in this gospel, Jesus is proclaiming very clearly, although in a mysterious way, so maybe not clearly, but truly, he's proclaiming that he is God. He is the very source of life. And he wants everyone, everyone who sees him to come to him. I, I was really drawn today just by this middle gospel that contains in it all of Jesus' desires. You do not want to come to me to have life, but he knows that he has life in him and he desires to share it. He's, he's referring here to, to the way you know, that Jews, when, when they're listening to one another, when they're having conversations, especially the Pharisees, when they're, they're having debates, they're, they refer to the authority, their own authority, by, by referring to the authority of Moses. They, they, they're, they're, that's, that's how the, the way that they argue, well, Moses said this, and that's why this, you know. 
And Jesus here is, is saying, well, Moses spoke about me, and I'm giving a new teaching because my authority is that which Moses relied on. So he, he's, he's referring, he's, he's essentially saying he is the word. He is the interpreter. He is the foundation of all interpretation and inviting everyone, Jews here, but also inviting us to receive that truth, that he is the only one through which our lives can be interpreted. And it's in him that is life, all life. And it's beautiful for us to soak up that truth too, to listen to those words that he speaks to us. You know, in this question, you do not want to come to me to have life. It's kind of a question for us. Do you want life from me and in my interpretation, my vision, my view of the world? And it, you know, our, our, our lives, you know, of course, we're preaching here to the choir. We're all here gathered around the Lord and the Eucharist. We're receiving from him daily. Yet we all know we live in a world that has so many voices. Turn on the television that, that begs, you know, for listen to this political party or this political party or this, you know, this, this is the sole thing of what is happening right now. But the reality, the truth, is what is happening in Jesus right now. Jesus, whom we proclaim, has died and rose again. He is the only, he is the only truth of what is happening right now. And, and beautifully, we're caught up in that, in, in the Eucharist, and what, what he is doing for us and for the world right now as he is pouring out his life still. I mean, that's, the, that's the, the foundation of what is really happening. Yes, there's a lot of darkness out there, and we all know that. But in the very foundation, he is giving us his life. And that's meant to be a deep light for us as we navigate in this very, very dark world. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, may God guide our Lenten practices and draw us more deeply into his love. We pray to the Lord. For leaders in the public sphere, may God guide them in acting for the good of the people. We pray to the Lord. For all who feel despair, may God lift the cloud of darkness and fill them with hope. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, that we may come to the Lord with the deepest desire for life and the life that he brings. We pray to the Lord. And for all of those who have died, especially for Joan Toddy, for whom this Mass is being offered, may God's mercy enfold them and bring them to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your infinite mercy, hear and grant our prayers through your Son, Jesus, who is Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. 
and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant that your servants freedom, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Oh, sadhu.